Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MLB slate for this evening. Bobby's out for today, so I'm going to be one of the content guys, say, riding solo. Um, and again, this is kind of an early look, and I hope to be live to cover all the, the late changes and things like that. Um, so I am going to, what I'm going to do is I do have a little bit of time, so I am going to go game by game, and then what we're going to do is build some early Saber Sim uh, uh, builds to give you an idea of how Sabersim works, to give you how I do it applies to this this slate, also to give you an idea of what a build could look like, right? Given 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 the information we have now, now as you guys know, baseball um, doesn't change as much as the other sports, but still, uh, lineup changes should be taken into consideration as we get closer to lock, and also uh, ownership uh, uh, projections do kind of change throughout the course of the day, so. I encourage everybody to come back six o'clock for live. Um, so we are going to go game by game. And just to give you an idea of where we're headed, and we do have a, a pitcher who's going to dominate the projections here. And uh, we have to figure out what you're going to do with him as we get there. Um, but we'll, we'll get there in a minute. So the first game, we have Baltimore at Washington. You have uh, Dean Kramer versus uh, Corey Abbott. Um According to my projections, I'm not really getting to either of these guys in uh, even as an SP2. Um, so for me, the pitching of this is going to be a pass. And again, I'm just kind of looking at this just to make sure I'm not missing anything because, again, it is going to be a slate where, you know, you pick the right SP2. That really is going to help you. <laughs> that might be the only – chance you have to differentiate unless you want to fade somebody who's going to score 40 fantasy points or maybe 40 fantasy points. So Washington and Baltimore does not seem to be uh, the way to go. Um, but with respect to hitting, um, I am showing Washington and Baltimore to be very reasonable values on, on the value rankings here. Um, as far as pure, you know, ability to score, I have Baltimore also uh, rating really high. So Baltimore is actually, you know, probably one of the top two overall plays on the slate, right? If they're going to show up kind of tied for second as overall, and then maybe, you know, fifth or so in value, that, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good stack here. So I think right off the bat, we're in, we're in good shape. And I should also say that I don't see too many weather concerns heading into this slate. Um, but we will you know, monitor that, but so far it's not really a big concern. So what we'll do is again, if we were just going to hand build, I think let's start with, with putting some Baltimore guys in and the, the, the guys that I'm coming up with are going to be, well, the cheap ones are going to be Stowers, Odor, but then there's Moncastle, Hayes and Mullins. But let's just see if I was just not caring about value per se it would be Mullins as well and Mount Castle also so let's put those guys in let's just see if we can't build something by hand just just for fun uh Mullins and what I say Mount Castle so we'll start with these two dudes and then Hayes or Santander or Matt Let, let's try to get the expensive ones in just for you know just to start I don't think we'll be able to if we want to pay up for DeGrom but we'll, we'll see uh, let's go for Rush, Rushman, Moncastle, Mullins. Who's the ex, next best guy? Gunnar Henderson, maybe? Santander? Yeah, let's put them both in. So let's put in Santander. So we're not even going to care about price or value at all here. We're just going to go for pure ability to score. So let's let's put this in. Um, and let's see what we come back with. Now, if you were going to go to the Washington side, um, I would look at, uh, Joey Maness looks pretty good. He's a little expensive. Luis Garcia, he's a little expensive. Luke Voigt would probably be, Luke Voigt and Alex Call would probably be my favorite. Um, Luke Voigt is only 2,900. Um, so he would make sense. And then Alex Call He's 2,000 flat in the outfield. Um, 
So if he actually gets in, he's going to be a very strong player, I think. It's going to be very, very strong value. So those are the two main guys. Call and, and Voight would be the guys. And then also Lane Thomas. But Lane Thomas, again, he's one of those guys that doesn't seem to put up big ceilings and have a lot of power. Even Although maybe not. He does have 15 home runs. Better, actually better than I thought. So let's let's put him in the mix here. Just, again, if you were going to stack on the Washington side, you know, let's uh, get rid of Santander, you put Thomas in, you get a little game stack going here. Um, you get rid of Montcastle, put in Voight. I mean, now you're, you're, you're kind of building something here. I don't know exactly what, but you're building something. Um, okay, so I think that's enough of that game, but I do think that you can see that there's certainly some pieces to be uh, to be had from that. Okay, um, next game, Toronto, Tampa. You have Manoa versus, I guess, the entire Tampa pitching staff. I mean, that's that's the way they usually roll. Um, whatever happened to Tyler Glass now, by the way? I guess we'll, we'll I'll, I'll research that a little later. But let's take a look at Manoa as an SP2 here. Um, I have Manoa actually not rating really high at all. Why, why is that? He hasn't really rated. Oh, I don't even know if he's pitching, right? So this is this is an interesting. So we got to look at this. So this is the game two of a doubleheader. I currently don't even have him in my projections. Um, so we'll, we'll come back and we'll look at this. I can't imagine me wanting to play him at ninety three hundred on a slate where you you know you want to pay up for Degrom at like a at like fourteen million, you know. So I, I, I imagine you're going to want to. You're going to want to pay down um, to get any kind of hitting in, but let's put him in just so, just so I don't forget. Um, and with respect to the hitting, again, this is game two of the doubleheader, so you're definitely going to have to look and see who's playing. Um, like right now, do I not even have this game projected? No, I have, I have Toronto projected here, but I don't really have them showing up as a good play. Um Tampa's tough, man. When they when they when they throw all these all these dudes at you, I mean it's it's kind of a tough it's kind of tough to score a lot of runs against them. Let's put it that way. That's why they're deep in the playoffs every year. Um, so I'm not really getting to Toronto too much. Let me look at it from a value perspective. Um, not really getting too much of that either. So so this game is it, it's interesting because you want to watch for lineup changes and you'll never know where you where you can get something cheap in a, in a good lineup position. So let, we'll take a look at that a little bit later, but. Um, but for now, it's probably I don't even think Manoa is particularly a great play, but I'm just gonna put him here for now, just so I don't forget to look at him later. All right, so you have Garrett Cole. Uh if Yankees going into Boston, and you have Garrett Cole against um Nick Pavetta. Um, so Garrett Cole is going to be the the guy that that people will attempt to use as a pivot off of the Grom at the top of the range. Okay. Um, I don't feel as though you can play both of them if you wanted to. So if you put in say Cole and de Grom, I mean, I mean, you could do it, you know, that, that that's when you really have to play all these Washington's and Baltimore's and things like that. But I think a lot of people are going to play them instead of de Grom. Um, I don't think that's the greatest idea. Um, so, so I, I just, I, I, just, I, again, the way my projections are looking, I just have DeGrom is just so much of a better play that it's just kind of silly pivot to him. I think if you, I think if you were going to fade DeGrom, you'd probably be, I would be more inclined to just double pay down than to play Cole. I think that if you did play Cole, I think I would try to do a, a build with both of them and, and see where else the value can come from. Because Cole does have the ceiling, but his the safety of playing in Boston is just is just and his profile this year. I mean, he's just gotten he's gotten tagged a little bit too often for my liking this year. Um, so I uh what I would do, I mean, this is my opinion. I mean, we'll run some builds, but I would either play Cole with the Grom or not at all. Uh, that would be my uh that would be my approach. Now, with respect to the hitting, though, oh, and what about Pavetta? Hold on. I always feel like I have to look a little extra at Pavetta. 
but I'm really not, he's a very poor option for me as far as an SP2 goes. So I wouldn't play him. Let me look at the, at the stacks though, and how these teams rank, because as I recall, yeah, the Yankees I have as my, as the top overall raw stack. And it looks as though they're going to be owned as well. So you have to kind of be careful about that. And I also though have them rated pretty high in terms of value. So uh, this is um, these, these these are tough situations. Um, these are tough teams when you have teams that rate really high, both on the raw points per scale and on the value scale. Um, those are kind of tough to fade. But but the thing is, is that they're going to be expensive, so it's going to be tough to get them in. Um, so like for example, like if you you know take a uh, take out all these Baltimores, now we can put them all back in as value guys. But if we want to play who we want to play. Uh, that would be uh, Judge, that would be Stanton, that would be even if you want to save a little money. I mean, you still want to play Torres. What position do they give him nowadays? Second base, Torres, and then Kiner Falefa, maybe either Kiner Falefa or Donaldson or Florio. I think Florio, Florial, however you, however you pronounce it. I think I think him at two K, if he gets in, is going to have to be played to make this work. And then your fifth guy, maybe again either Donaldson or or uh, Kiner Falefa. So if you play Kiner Falefa, then you probably could make this work if you pay down to pitching. So. Yeah, I, I think this is a this is going to be a very strong uh, strong stack that is going to be pretty popular as well. So, uh, but uh, this is this does look really good. I mean, Fenway is a, a nice park to, to hit into, and Pivetta does give up power when he's not on, and um, this is a this is probably a good play. Um, like for example, if you put Cole in here, I mean, I mean, you really you actually could do it. You know, if you could find some like uber cheapos at catcher first and third you definitely could do it and and, and may, maybe that is what you're supposed to do maybe you're not supposed to pay down a pitch maybe you're supposed to take this these these all these strikeouts that are up there with these two dudes and and find value um we'll we'll, we'll talk about some other pitchers as we get there but the more i the more i try to build this and see it it's not how 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 easy it is but it's not that hard I mean, I'm sure I'll be able to find you five cheapos to fit to fit in, to fit in here. Maybe this is what you're supposed to do, but we'll we'll look at the other pitching options and we'll we'll see what we're comparing here. So uh, Mets against the Cubs, as I mentioned before, Degrom is a uh, best play on the slate. Um, he's 11-8, and unfortunately or fortunately, you can just get him in too easily. You know, like he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get his 30 fantasy points and 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 and, and roll. You know, and and and. Well, a point on a point per dollar basis, it's not great, but but it doesn't matter if, if you can grab those points and you can still build lineups, you know. So he's going to be, I don't know, I want to say seventy percent owned. Makes sense. And so I, I'm kind of just inclined to eat it. Um, that that that's my that's my opinion. But it's going to depend on what other options there are, you know. Uh, and what hitting we're really giving up. Um, if, if we like what, what hitting are we going to get to that? We wouldn't have gotten to otherwise. You know what I mean? If we fit, if we don't play the ground, I don't, my initial look is I don't see anything. Um, like my, the best team that I've seen so far is the Yankees. And I've already shown that you can get, a, get them in by even playing Cole and DeGrom. So it's, um, it's kind of a tough fade. If you want to know the truth. Uh, Let's look at the hitting, uh, I guess specifically the Mets. <laughs> um, I'm actually not getting to the Mets uh, uh, in any of my stacks. Very, really very poorly on, on the raw points basis and, and, and not even worse on the value rankings. So this is going to be a pass for me. And uh, obviously not to play anybody on the Cubs. All right, so Kansas City and Minnesota, you have uh, Ryan and Bubik. And once again, what we're, what we're looking for is, 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 is SP2 options, right? And whether we need them or whether they're good, you know? Um, so 
it looks as though, I mean, if you looked at my sheet here, that there's a big wall of pitchers that are kind of vying for that top SP2, uh, you know, uh, position. And I do have Joe Ryan as ever so slightly at the top of that list. Um, so, I mean, but I, I want you to, to, to look at something for a second. So if you played Ryan instead of in this, in this same bill, okay. If you put, if you played Ryan instead of Cole, for example, like if you played Cole, you'd have to find 2,400 a man. And this is just doing full five man Yankee stacks, right? Um, you'd have to find 2,400 hour guys here where if you play Joe Ryan, If you played Joe Ryan, you could spend thirty three hundred. So is it is that worth it? Like is 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 the the three thirty three hundred hour guys going to outscore the three twenty four hundred hour guys by the amount that you know that that Cole is going to or may outscore Ryan by? I actually think it's pretty. It's fairly close. Um, I don't. I don't think that's 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 such a. Uh, I think that's a tough decision. So yeah, maybe it's not so easy. Maybe you can't just jam in, you know, Degrom and Cole and, and make it so easy. Because listen, twenty four hundred hour guys do stink, and thirty three hundred hour guys are are a little bit better, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think this is a legit decision of whether to pay down for that second pitcher. And Ryan, for now, I mean, it looks to be just ever so slightly at the top of the food chain. But we'll get to a couple of other guys as we get there. Um, Bubik. I mean, actually, I don't have him significantly worse. You want to know the truth than Ryan? Um, it's he's certainly a little bit worse, but I don't, not that much worse. And, and let's just see again, just from this particular build. Now this gets you forty three hundred a man. So now, now we're talking like actual players that you can get in. You know, and again, this doesn't mean you have to play the Hickeys. I'm just giving you an example. Um, but you know, I, I would, you know, and yes, you don't have to play these same five guys. I mean, you could, um, you could take out. But then again, you are already, you know, paying all the way down for Florio in two K. So this is probably the, the cheapest way you want to play the Yankees. You know, um, so it's not as just you know you're overpaying. Like, like if if you wanted to pay a little more for a little more security, not security for more upside. For the Yankees, you could put in Donaldson. I think he's definitely like a better play than say Florio, you know. But if you do that, then you're going to really need to play Bubik to get in these guys. Maybe, but maybe not. Let's just say again. Let's do this again. So let's put Cole. See, now you can't play Cole, and now um, you can you can sort of play Ryan. So, and the difference again between Ryan and Bubik here would be 2,600 a man versus 3,500 a man, which is a big deal. You know, especially, you know, when you're considering first base and outfield positions or whatever it is. So, so there is a difference. You know, it's not so easy to say, well, I'll just pay the extra thousand, I'll work it out at the end. I mean, there is a difference, especially when you have like a stack and you really kind of want to play. Um, so I think the Bubik is, is definitely in play. I mean, I don't expect much. But you know where you're expecting from him? You're expecting him to just kind of open up the rest of your lineup a little bit. Um, let me see if, if, if I was getting to any of the hitting here. Minnesota, when you look at it from raw perspective, not really getting to either Minnesota or uh, KC. However, when you rank these by value, I'm actually getting Minnesota as the top overall value on the slate. Um, so that's something to consider. So, so let's, let's talk through some of these Minnesota guys that I, that kind of make the list here. Um, now what I'm looking at is guys that are showing up in, in my raw, my raw point stack and my value stacks. And that's going to be Gio or Shella. And then there's going to be, Miranda at first base. I mean, these guys are so cheap, right? This, this is going to be what happens if you want to play both Cole and uh, DeGrom. You can play all these Minnesotas. Um, Sanchez, put him in. 
He's only 3K. He's still a 3,700 a man. Um, Garlic, I guess, would be my next favorite. He's the one that would show up. And then you could even, I mean, pay up, sort of. I mean, you can pay up for um, for Correa and still have plenty of money. You know what I mean? So uh, if you want to play Minnesota as the top-rated value stack on the board, I mean, you can see what you could do with, with these pitchers. You could just take your, you know, your, your top two pitchers on the slate and, and just and not worry that they're probably both a little overpriced. I mean, especially the Cole side. Um, so Minnesota, very, very strong play. And obviously they're going to be pretty strong as individual plays in, um, you know, in uh, as complimentary stacks and things like that. Um, okay, moving on, uh, Milwaukee, St. Louis, you have Montgomery and a bullpen game. And Montgomery, as I've been mentioning since you know since he got traded, I mean he's been a, he's been a new man, right? Uh, for the most part, since he since he left New York, let's take a look at his game log. I mean he's he's over twenty almost every game since he left uh, since he left uh, New York, and you know Milwaukee's not that great. It's a pretty good matchup. So so I mean it's not the greatest matchup, but it's not bad. He's only eighty four hundred. He's showing up as a legit SP two. You know he. I have him as, as worse than than Ryan, but not by a lot. Um, so again, if you want to make that call and, and and pay down for pitching, I think this is probably a little too cheap on Montgomery. Um, so let's let's put these and again. So so the analysis is the same with Montgomery and Ryan, right? They they both do the same thing for you. They they you know get you the ability to play most of what you want. And leave you about, you know, about 30, 33, 3400 left per man, those last three spots, as opposed to double paying up, where it leaves you about 2500 or something like that. So I definitely think Montgomery is, is in play here as a possible SP2. Um, let me look at the stacks. Um, I'm not really getting to Milwaukee or St. Louis uh, just on a raw basis. And on a value basis, I'm really not getting to them either. So for me, it's just going to be Montgomery probably and nothing for the rest of this game. And moving on, we have, um, what is this matchup? Oakland, Texas, Reagans versus Wal Waldachuk. Um, I, I can't imagine either of these pitchers showing up, but I, I'll take a look. Um, no, I'm not really getting any of this. So, I mean, Waldachuk is, I have him rated fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. He's he's way down the list, um, so I'm not I'm not going to be playing him. Uh, and likewise, Cole Reagan is not going to be playing him. Let me look at the at the hitting just just for fun. I didn't notice at first, but let me take a look and see how these guys either of these teams rate. Um, mm, not really. Texas is like eighth. That's the best I can come up with on raw points, and maybe in value they're a little bit. Maybe Oakland is like sixth best value so to me this game is probably somewhat of a pass all right you have uh wow so this is interesting you have chad cool in uh, chicago against michael kopek um first of all let's let's talk about the uh let's talk about the uh, the pitching and i do have kopek as pretty much tied for ryan as as the best sp2 so let's 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 do this again. Let's put this up here. So we'll put in Kopech. And then again, we'll put in those those Yankees. And there's other guys we're gonna screw around with in a minute. But again, when you're going down to 7,100, who is it? Torres, Connor Falifa, Judge, Stanton, and Florial, right? Now you're leaving yourself 3,700 a man, which is I mean, more than plenty to do what you want. So that extra money from Ryan down to Kopech does do you a little bit of good. So, uh, and I really can't make the case that Ryan is really a better play than Kopech. So I would probably, probably are on the side of Kopech, one of the truth. Now, with respect to hitting, I mean, I, I don't need any projections to tell me 
that the White Sox are probably gonna gonna get after Chad Cool, but it's so weird. You know, I look at the pro- actual projections here and have them rated like third, fourth, sixth, maybe barely. I can't imagine why. But then on the value side, I have them rated fourth. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just presume that they're in play. Um, just that I think mean, those projections are good enough. Plus, what I just kind of instinctively know about this is um, is that Chad Cool is definitely someone that can be touched up. Um, and the White Sox have certainly shown quite a bit of life over the last you know several weeks. Let me just go over who I would like from uh, the White Sox side here. You have um, let me clear these. And again, it'd be nice if we could. Well, you know. Well, what happened if we just play if we play Kopech and Degrom? Because remember, you get a little correlation if you play Kopech along with the White Sox hitters. So I guess the top guys are going to be Abreu, only four K. It's a good play. Then you have uh, our hero Yohan Moncada. Our hero, he won me all the money last week. Then you have, then you have a choice of what you want to do here. I think Gavin Sheets is probably a good play. I mean, he's kind of a good combination of, of, of raw points and value. And then you have a choice between whether you want to spend up for guys like Jimenez and Andrews. Oh, no, Andrews is actually a good play regardless. So let, we'll put Andrews in as the fourth at 3K. And then for the fifth guy from this stack, it would be between Jimenez and and Grandal, depending on what you want to do. But you could see already that even if you pay up for Jimenez, I mean, this is, you got plenty of money left, you know? So if you didn't want to play the Yankees and you could take, you could play the White Sox along with Kopech, I think this is a very, very reasonable uh, way to go. So I guess this next game is going to be kind of the hoodoo. Uh, it's going to be the interesting one. So you have um, Dodgers against Arizona. And let's first take a look at the pitching because I, I'm really not getting to any, I don't believe, uh, Kershaw. I almost I almost wonder what's going on here. I, mean, I, only, I am projected very poorly. I, I don't know. Uh, like Arizona has been good, but I mean, Kershaw is still Kershaw. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with the projection on this one and not play him. Um, and he still gets that name that I think gets a little over on sometimes. So I'm not going to play him. Merrill Kelly is um, is not bad. <laughs> Every once in a while, he puts up a really good game. I just don't really want to play it against the Dodgers. So I think neither of these pitchers are going to be in play, for me at least. Um, what's interesting is the stats. Let's take a look. So I do have the Dodgers rated third overall. Um with respect to, to raw points. And what's interesting is that I have them really near the bottom in terms of value, which which is which means, right, that they're probably really expensive. So we, we asked before, what would the point be of paying down a pitcher? Is there a team that we really want to get to that we could, you know, have to overspend on? And I guess the, the question is, is the Dodgers that type of team? Um, well, let's, let's start, let, let, let's see who I'd want to play if I wanted to play him. Right. So we're going to start, which we're going to start with, we're going to start with Turner at shortstop. Then we're going to go to, we're going to start, then we're going to go to Freeman. He's 5,700. Then probably Mookie, right? Mookie in there. And then I would be between Gallo, Thompson, and the two Turners, uh, excuse me, Gal, uh, Gallo, Thompson, Smith, and Turner. Let's just let, let's 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 see what would happen if we wanted to spend, and let's see if we wanted to actually spend and, and not save the money on those the cheaper Dodgers. Let's see if we wanted to play Will Smith, and then also play Justin Turner. So now, if we did this, I, I promise you, we would not be able to play Cole. Right? I'm also pretty sure, I mean, let's just see, how far do we have to go down to be able to play anything? If we played with Joe Ryan, 
can't do it. Can't play anybody left. We played Kopech. We couldn't do it. So mathematically, we couldn't play anybody except, can we get, how about Chris Brubich? Nope. So if you played these Dodgers, then you could not play DeGrom. Even one DeGrom. Before we, before we get to the next point, let, let me let me first replace Will Smith and Turner with the two cheapos. Let's see if that changes. Let's see if instead we went to Gallo. I just want to see the difference here. We went to Gallo. 3,400. And then, then Thompson, Trace Thompson at 2,700. So if we did that, now we could play, well, let's just see. Let's just start with the bottom of the barrel. Let's just go all the way on a Bubik. If we play Bubik, then you could play these guys, right? 3,100, these three, just fine. But let's see if you wanted to play somebody a little bit better. Let's see if you wanted to play even Kopech. Play Kopech instead of Bubik. I mean, you could. I mean, you you could play Degrom with a reasonable pitcher, and still get your lineup in, as long as you pay down for those other two Dodgers. You know, as long as you went Gallo Thompson instead of, um, instead of uh, Will Smith and Turner. Let's let's split the difference here, just for the hell of it. Let's let's. Let's put in Will Smith and Gallo. See if that makes a difference. See, if we did that, then that's not going to be good enough. Then you can't play Kopech. You probably couldn't even play Bubik, but we just double check. I mean, not really. I mean, so um, so that's the thing. The Will Smith is the is the equalizer. Um but let's say you wanted to play Turner. <laughs> I can't believe I'm just spending so long on this, but I don't know. I think it's interesting. Let's play Turner and then Gallo. Play Turner and Gallo. But let's say you play Turner and Thompson. Turner and Thompson. It's the same problem, right? You couldn't even play, I mean, let's say you put Kopech in, for example. Um, no, you can't really do it. So so the here's so here's here's the rub here. So if if you wanted to play um Freeman, Turner, and then either Will Smith or um or or um or Gallo, like for example. That's when you could make the case that you want to spend down for your second pitcher. So you want to do something like Kopech with Ryan. Or even or even Cole. But 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 I think this makes more of the difference. So if you wanted to play these Dodgers, these particular Dodgers, then you play something like this. And then you have to make that decision is, is, is that one little difference being able to play those, those Dodgers worth the, um, you know, not having the ground and, and that 30 points that he's probably going to get you or now he's going to get somebody else. But if you think about it, I mean, what that means is let's say you play Kopech and he scores 20 and then the other guy you're competing against has the ground and scores 30. Are you going to be able to get 10 more points out of that other that other uh, hitter, uh, those other two hitters? Maybe. maybe. I mean, maybe. It's very possible. Um, so, I don't know. I think it's interesting. It's interesting to do it this way. All right, so let's get rid of the Dodgers. Uh, but I do think they're, you know, obviously I think they're a good play, as, as I've you know, spent a lot of time on this. So let's move on to San Diego against Seattle. And now you get – Put the ground back in here before I forget. You have San Diego and Seattle, and you have two pretty good pitchers. You have you have uh, Darvish and Gilbert, but you you know the other teams that their matchup is not that great. Let's take a look at how these guys rank. I actually have Darvish 
He's kind of, um, you know, a secondary SP2, to say the least. I'm just kind of inclined to play Cole if I'm going to do this. Um, I don't, don't think that getting to 10-6 makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I just I just don't think the context of this slate wants me to play a 10-6 a guy that's below a 10-9 guy who I already probably don't want to play. I shouldn't say that, but I guess what you could do in those DeGrom Cope and those DeGrom Cole lineups, you could make some DeGrom Yard Darvish lineups just, you know, save a little ownership. I guess that makes some sense. And Logan Gilbert, I was expecting to be a little bit better of a play, but he's rating just to be, you know, worse than these others. I mean, he's worse than Ryan, worse than Kopech. Um, and worse than Montgomery. So he's just not showing up for me as kind of a top play on the slate. Let me look at the hitting here. Um, not really getting to San Diego at all. Um, not getting to Seattle at all. It not Certainly not in the raw points uh, score scoring system. And then nothing in value either. So I think this game is either maybe a little Darvish or just kind of a pass. And then the last game you have uh, Kyle Wright against uh, Eunice. I don't know if he's going to be the opener or whatever it is, but um, uh, I don't think it matters. I don't think he's in play, regardless of what his role is going to be. Kyle Wright continues to project very poorly for me, and, and I'm not going to play him. Uh, so this, 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 this pitching matchup is, is not for me. Let's take a look at the hitting though and see if maybe Atlanta might show up. I, I feel like I feel like they might. Let's just take a look. Yeah, I have Atlanta rated fourth, um, really right behind the Dodgers in terms of raw uh, upside. So I think that's definitely in play. Um, and with respect to value though, they're they're kind of expensive, not really showing up as the greatest value. So again, this could be a stack that you might try to make a case for that this would be one where you have to pay down at pitching to get there. So like just for the hell of it, we'll look at the, um, we'll look at the, uh, the guys we'd want to play for Atlanta would be Acuna for sure. And then Matt Olson, right? I'll put Matt Olson against the righty. All that power. Then Grissom, Acuna, Excuse me, I have Grissom already. Michael Harris. So it, it depends on how much you want to spend. So okay, let's do the same thing before. So there's there's a couple of ways you can go. You could spend or you could save or both. But let's let's try to spend first. We'll go Riley. We'll go Swanson. And then we'll go Michael Harris. And just to give you an idea, like if you did this, I'm feeling as though you're getting they're gonna get the same issue as you did with um with uh with the Dodgers, right? Then you can't play DeGrom with Ryan. You can't play DeGrom with Bubik, even, I presume. Let's take a look. I mean, I mean you could. You could play DeGrom with Bubik if you did this, but that's about it. Like, even if you went up to um to Kopech, you already can't play anybody. So you'd have to play Bubik if you want to play these Atlanta guys. But if you wanted to swap out for some of the cheaper guys, like if you didn't want to play Riley and Swanson, you could go play Ozuna, right? If he gets in, I don't know. They haven't, they haven't played him too much, but anyway, let's say he gets in and then you get Grisham 3,400. And then you get maybe, um, uh, I mean, you can play Robbie Grossman if you want, but let's just leave it like this. Like if you did this, I mean, now, now you have a chance, I think, because now you could play Kopech and, and do this pretty easily. So it kind of, it's similar to the Dodgers. Like if, if, you, if you wanted to play the expensive Braves, you would have to, um, you would have to not play the ground. And that's when you double pay down for those pitchers. Well, let's just, again, let's do, let's do the hybrid. Let's do Riley, but no Swanson, for example. And let's do something like, I don't know, like uh, this. So you can do that. I mean, you could play DeGrom and Kopech and then play some of the expensive Atlantas. Like you play Riley, but it's this Ozuna play that you, if he doesn't get in, then you have a problem. 
I mean, you could play Harris. I mean, you could sort of get away with this, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, so again, it's, it's a very similar idea to the Dodgers, is that if you want to play the most expensive Dodgers, then you should you need to pay down for the pitching, which means you're going to get the Kopech slash um, uh, uh, Ryan, those types of bills. Um, okay, so that's that's all very interesting. Why don't we see what Sabersim would actually do for us if we um, if we just input in my projections as they are now? You know, and it's 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 interesting because just what. I never, I think I never get right. I'm getting pretty good at it, at predicting what Saber Sim is going to give me. By the way, is anybody playing the early slate? No, I'm not playing the early slate. The two gamer? Let me see. Is there any, anything good going on in that slate? Hold on, let me just take a look. Um, no, nah, it's like 1K for first, now the main one's sold back. Um, all right, so let's take a look. Let's upload this. And again, it's much easier for you to do it right from the true DFS site, but I'm, I'm doing it for my own raw, raw, data, raw, raw data here. So if we update my projections as they are now, now again, I don't have Manoa projected. That's the one thing, but I, th I think we've determined that Manoa is kind of out of play, right? I mean, his name didn't come up in any of these ideas. So let's let's build 150, just to give you an idea of what, what would show up, right? Keep everything the same build 150 lineups and I wonder if they're going to try to jam in Cole and DeGrom. I'm almost positive they give me 100% DeGrom. Uh, as a matter of fact, if they don't give me 100% DeGrom, I will I, I will do five push-ups on camera. Well, I can't do them on camera if the camera's point down, but I will do five push-ups that you'll you'll watch. You'll you'll kind of see me. Actually, you won't even see me, but I'll, I'll, you'll trust me as I'm doing them. Let's see. Uh, let's see. DeGrom, uh, want, whoa, <laughs> that's so funny. 98% DeGrom. So here we go. All right. Five push ups. Can't see me. I'm going down here. One, two, three, four, five. I cannot believe that I gambled like that. How is it not giving me 100% DeGrom? Well, I guess the first thing I have to do is, is figure out what the non-DeGrom lineups are. That's, it's, first of all, it's giving me 15 pitchers and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I guess they're going to give me, you know, the, uh, the, that, the, 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 that build to get to the Dodgers. Let's take a look. Is it all the way to the bottom? Yeah, there you here you go. You get a Kopech bu Bubic lineup that jams all these Dodgers in. That's so funny. That's exactly what I suggest. But I, and maybe even a Kremer Kopech. Now I'll bet you that if I played thirty, I would get no. I would get a hundred percent. But let's. Yeah. So that's pretty. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, I can't believe I lost five push-ups there. But, you know, these are the guys that we talked about, right? DeGrom, Ryan, Kopech. You know, this, these are the – and these make logical sense. Uh, it, gave, it gave me a little bit of the, the Waldachuk and the Bubik and the, and the Gilbert, which I wasn't expecting. But um, these are just kind of the logical guys. And, again, the line of construction is just going to be based on, you know. All right, so let's take a look at the teams. Now, if you're playing 30 lineups, let's actually let's go back to 150. So if you played 150 lineups, the highest stack exposure would actually be Baltimore. However, I'm not convinced that that's the highest, like five man stack exposure. So let's break it down by that. Let's see. Uh yeah. So the highest five man. Wow, this is really interesting. So the highest five man stack exposure is actually the Yankees. But only 6%. Highest four man stack exposure is Oakland, three man stack exposure, Oakland. Wow. A two man stack Yankees. This is interesting. Actually, that's not that interesting. So, so only 20% were five twos, 6% were five X, five X, five, 5% were five threes. So there's quite a few 
in these 150 of these non-traditional stacks. So you you'd have to make that decision whether you believe that or not. Uh, I usually tend to, actually with this, I usually tend to not believe it. I usually tend to, to force in stacks, um, but it's probably probably the wrong idea. Um, so again, I, I guess that's uh, that's it. I, just to review, um, Degrom is probably something you're supposed to do, uh, except in those really just offbeat lineups where you want to overpay for the Dodgers and Braves and stuff like that. And depending on how many lineups you play, actually, let's 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 go back to thirty for a second. Like if I played thirty lineups, what what my stack exposure be? It would be. It would still be mostly well Baltimore because they have a lot of two man. It would give me mostly Baltimore actually. That would be my highest exposed. It wouldn't. It wouldn't really be the Yankees. Interesting. Um, so these are the team. You know, these are the teams you're looking at: Baltimore, the Yankees. Um, I talked about the White Sox. I think that's a good play. Um, and as far as pitching goes, you have your Degrom, and then there's a lot of Kopech and a lot of Ryan. Um, these are just kind of dominating the board. And uh, that'll do it. Uh, I will. I will be around live to walk you through the, the rest of this. And um, till then, good luck.